Hello and welcome. My name is Christian Glück and I'm product manager for MyMix. Today I'd like to discuss some important points about using in-ear monitors. There are several reasons to use in-ear monitors. The most common is probably the overall better sound quality. So not only the musicians but to a big degree the whole audience gets a much, much better sound because of the dramatically reduced stage volume. Something that's also getting more and more attention is hearing protections for the musicians. So musicians love music and they need their hearing, so the ears are treasures that they want to protect. Another reason to use in-ear monitors is when bands are using pre-produced tracks and play, combine them with live instruments. However, not everything is that easy. So many musicians have reservation against in-ear monitoring. And I don't have to go that far. I'm a musician and sound engineer myself and until I used my mix, I did not want to use in-ear monitors at all. And then there are musicians that do use in-ear monitors and they still are not really happy. They kind of feel isolated. They got, to, it's hard to express. They call it like, it's a strange sound. Sometimes they call for M missing ambience and stuff like that. So they are not really happy when they are not happy. They don't listen easy, they don't play easy, and simply they don't get in the flow and don't have fun. So let's take a look at how we listen first. Most of the time when you watch some webinars or presentations in the pro audio area, it's about the electrical portion of the signal chain. Sometimes the acoustical if it's from speakers. Today I want to touch a little bit the psychoacoustical part because it's really important to understand how our hearing works to understand what are the requirements for in-ear monitors. So we live in a three-dimensional world and our listening is also three-dimensional. Our brain can detect sound sources and calculate better than any computer can. Key for our 3D listenings are seven cues and the two most important are the time difference and the level difference of a signal between reaching our two ears. Within the other five, there is also the early echo or reverberation that helps our brain to detect where a signal is coming from. Now, the 3D listening is something that we experience every day. This is very, very natural to us because that's how we perceive and hear our world. So, a vocalist on stage hears the voice from a monitor speaker and because he's standing right in front of that, the difference is very, very small. However, it is there and helps him to localize where the sound source is coming from. So, as there are more instruments and sound sources on the stage, the brain will notice the position of each and every one simply based by the level and the time difference the signal arrives at the both ears. Now, on top of the direct sources, we also hear reflections back from the walls and also the sound back from the venue. That is something that can actually change dramatically between a sound check and a concert with a packed room. Anyway, no matter if the sound on stage is good or not, it is three-dimensional what we are hearing. So why is this now so different with in-ear monitors? With in-ear monitors, we put the plugs in our ears 
and that isolates us from the room. So there is no room information anymore. We only hear what's in the mix, not less and not more. Let's take a look at the sources for that mix. If they are not already line level, most microphones are picking up the signal at a distance of one or two inches from the source. So these signals that are used in the mixing console to create a mix have little to no room information. And they all arrive at about the same time. So there is no trace of their original positioning. And here comes the monotrap. Remember, our brain uses mainly the differences between the two ears to localize and differentiate individual signals. Now, using mono means that both ears get the exact same signal. There is no time or level difference at all. And the result is a one-dimensional sound image. Because the brain can't differentiate anymore, all voices and instruments seem to come from the same spot. And just from experience, we know that this can't be the case. So the brain tells us permanently that can't be true, here's something wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. And that's the main reasons for many musicians feeling uneasy using any monitoring. It's not the fact that they are missing what they call the ambience. What they experience is that instead of a three-dimensional sound, they now hear a one-dimensional sound. And that's what makes them feel uneasy. But it's getting worse. Here you see an overview about the frequency range of most common instruments. And as you can see, most voices and instruments have a very wide overlapping frequency range. Now, because there is no spatial information that allows the differentiation in the mix, the only way to differentiate these signals is to use heavy equalizing and cut out certain frequency bands of the individual signals. But even with a four-band fully parametric EQ and a person who knows how to handle it, this is just a band-aid. Because any small change in pitch, tune or the arrangement will need to redial the mix immediately. I think most of you do remember a monitor sound that was great and within a minute or less changed and became really bad. So that's a result of using band-aids, what I said. And let's not forget, there is a reason why some experienced engineers say that no EQ is the best EQ. Because creating a great sounding mix with a high level of distinction between the individual sources won't work with band-aids. So mixing for in-ear monitoring in mono is a call for trouble. And that is regardless if it's mixed by an engineer on a console or if musicians are doing it themselves using a cool wireless app to control the aux buses of a console. A mono mix for in-ear monitoring puts us from a 3D world into a one-dimensional sound image. That's the main course for musicians feeling uneasy. Going stereo is a step in the right direction. So two individual mixes for the left and the right ear using a pan pot to get a level difference between the individual signals. So we have the drum 
a little bit to the left, the bass a bit to the right, the guitar also a little bit to the left and imagine that's a mix for a vocalist, that microphone is put right in the center. Now that helps to get a much much better differentiation. What's still missing is the room information. The room information is coming back adding stereo effects per individual channel. So a little room to the drums, nothing to the bass, a little bit more to the guitar and a lot on the vocal. And all of a sudden the signals get way more distinctive. So each voice in each instrument gets its own room information according to its panning position. The voices and instruments are getting so much more distinct and articulated that changes in level or pitch or tune don't bother anymore because an instrument and the voice could still be heard clear and distinct, easy listening. And when musicians can listen easy, they can play easy. They are getting in the flow and they start enjoying making music. So that's why we put in my mix an individual effect scent per channel. The stereo effect scent is right between the tone control and the pan and there is a choice of three rooms, three reverbs and an adjustable delay. And that's why musicians using my mix have a big smile on their face. So the best to get this point across is really to listen yourself. We've prepared an audio demo that we cannot play as part of this webinar because you need to listen in stereo with a proper listening device. And that's not really the part here in this webinar. So please send an email to carl at mubeckcorp.com and he's happy to send you the link to either the mp3 or the CD file so that you can listen to the difference between a stereo mix with effects providing a 3D sound image and a mono mix at the one-dimensional picture. So as a summary, when you use in-ear monitors it is absolutely necessary to provide individual stereo mixes. For a three-dimensional listening experience that helps to differentiate all the individual sources, you need to be able to add stereo effects to each channel individually. So that's why we included individual effect sense in my mix from the very beginning. So now I'm coming back to the complaints of musicians feeling isolated and some rumors about ambient microphones. Ambient microphones can be good to capture the feedback from the audience. So while they do contain room information, they can't help to create a differentiated three-dimensional sound image for the in-ear monitor mix. For a good result, ambient microphones need to be placed accordingly and blended into the mix. So the blue arrows here show some possible positions for ambient microphones in this beautiful venue. Now in most cases these ambient microphones need to be driven by the engineer. Driven means when the band is playing they need to be turned down because otherwise they would completely muddy up the monitor mix while when the band stops playing, they need to be brought up so the band can clearly hear what's going on in the audience. The best position for the ambient microphones really depends on the application. But in 99% of time, this is not where you have your personal monitor mixing device. A built-in ambient microphone will not get you the feedback from the audience nor help to create 
a 3D sound image. That's why we didn't put one into my mix. So if you want to add ambient microphones to your monitor mix, each my mix has two inputs with switchable phantom power that are just perfect to add one or two ambient microphones to the network. And you can place these microphones at a suitable position where they make acoustically sense. The nice thing, these local inputs on the MyMix are network inputs. So if you connect a microphone or something else into any of these MyMixes, this signal will become available for everybody else. So a pair of well-placed ambient microphones and everybody can blend them into their mix. I hope I was able to explain that the complaints from musicians using in-ears about feeling isolated, not having the ambience that they want, is actually coming from listening to a 1D sound versus the three-dimensional sound that they're used to and that my mix has the solution to provide every musician a 3D sound image. So, if you got any questions, now is the time to place them. Thank you, Christian. Terry Ray asks, would time delaying individual instruments help create a 3D image in the monitors? That's a very good question. And the answer is yes. Adding an individual delay to each and every sound source would definitely help with a better positioning in the listening image. And sound engineers that work with classical recordings do this a lot, where they have room microphones and additional close microphones. They need to play very, very carefully with the individual channel delays to create the correct sound image. Thank you for your question, Terry. I hope we were able to answer it. And here is another question from Brandon. He says, we are using my mix. Several of our vocalists have been commenting that they can hear instruments nicely in their mixes, but they're having a hard time hearing themselves among with the other vocalists. Any tips we can pass along to them? So they all have their individual microphone channels, but still have issues hearing themselves. I would bet that they run their mixes pretty much in mono, so most or all channels are dead center. The advice is to use the panning function to get the instruments and the other voices placed around them, and then add a bit effect, they can just keep the standard large room preset, to some of these channels. That'll change their sound from a 1D to a three-dimensional sound, and it will be much, much easier to differentiate the signals and their own voice will be standing out nicely from the other sources. Well, those are all the questions that we had for our Q&A. I wanted to thank everyone who participated in this webinar. And before we go, I wanted to ask if you have any feedback or any topics you'd like to see covered in future webinars, please feel free to email me at carl with a K at movecorp.com. That's spelled M-O-V-E-K-C-O-R-P.com. Thanks again, everyone. We'll see you later.